scouting, almost everybody was in Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. Very few exceptions. Uh, that was militia training. Mm -hmm. um, what we need to do, I think, is to have that kind of extra academic uh, training with a militia with a militia focus. Guy, uh, kids won't form gangs if they're provided a gang, mm -hmm. the right kind of gang initially. Right. Teach them how to enforce the law, they won't be organizing among themselves to break the law. Mm -hmm. And I also think that to break the cycle of the culture of the, the street culture that now infests young people, we need to put most at-risk kids in military boarding schools. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in the, in the small towns and suburbs, but in the inner cities, most of those kids ought to be marching and drilling and, you know, picking wind off the grass and, you know, <laughs> standing for inspection and, mm -hmm. you know, doing the kinds of things that good military boarding schools do. Right. Uh, they, they can, you know, maybe go home on weekends, that kind of thing, but... Uh, they need to be t get separated from the gangs, from the streets, from the bullies, from uh, television, from video games, you know, from all sorts of vices that they would otherwise indulge in, and uh, uh, be given structure and discipline and leadership, and uh, then if, if all that is done, maybe you can break the cycle of adolescence that my grandfather warned about. Mm -hmm. Because the essence of what my grandfather warned about, that I write about in that essay, My Grandfather in Public Education, is that if we educate kids in classes graded by age, they will be too much under the influence of kids their own age and not under the, enough under the influence of adults and we will wind up with is raising a nation of adolescents. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've seen happen. The kids leaving public school today are much less prepared, mm -hmm. not just to be members of society, but to play ordinary roles like spouse and parent and so forth. Mm -hmm. They are children having children. Right. When I was in school, kids were taught how to be parents and how to be spouses. Uh, that was part of the education their parents, and usually extended families, uh, imparted to them. Now they got that in part, of course, by caring for younger siblings, right. uh, for doing household chores, for doing, as kids, a lot of the things that would or had corresponded to the duties of spousehood and parenthood. A successful spousehood yeah, and parenthood. Right. So the knowledge that they have both parents as role models, but they were also taught how to play those roles mm -hmm. while they were still kids. So by the time they, you know, became adults, they would actually be emotional adults and not emotional adolescents. Right. Um, and a lot follows from that. My grandfather started in 1899 in one-room schoolhouses. He transitioned to uh, modern public schools about 1920 or so. So he taught in those until about 1935. So he had a chance to observe the transition. Mm -hmm. Now the the transition was intended, was sold, as a way of making education more efficient. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be modeled on a, like a production line. Right. Well, that model doesn't really work for educating kids. Uh, they don't all 
develop at the same rate. Mm -hmm. On a case in point, I was, you know, a little quite far ahead of, of my fellow students. Um, but what my grandfather did, he was one schoolmaster at the top of a pyramid. He had the most advanced students teaching the less advanced students, who in turn taught less advanced students, and all the way down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Now that, they weren't sorted by age, they were sorted by the, their achievement level. Mm -hmm. So that my mother and her siblings were in general often teaching kids older than themselves because they were more advanced. Uh, but it worked because the schoolmaster being on top propagated adult values mm -hmm. all the way down the chain. And could observe them in right. the behaviors in the classroom and correct any that were inappropriate or right. harmful. Right. He also he, he had some sort of spin it charming remark once about kids that were jumpy, he called them. Uh, he put them to work chopping wood. <laughs> so there was always a need for wood, even even not just in winter, right? because uh, uh, he had a, the stove was used for cooking too. They right. could cook meals for the kids at lunch, you know. Right. They'd bring their food with them and, and some of them would, they would cook for all the others. And, so it was a uh, very constructive joint. exercise. Yeah, exactly. Now imagine if we took every ADD kid in modern schools mm -hmm. and gave them a little bit of manual labor. Yeah. I'm sure we wouldn't need janitorial staff. <laughs> well, and, and remember too that there's no longer a PE requirement. Right. They no longer get recess. No outlet for that energy. Yeah. A kids need recess. Uh, need exercise first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. They need to burn off all that surplus energy so they can settle down and, and, and sit in a focus. seat and, and focus on education. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things that people, you know, at high levels think are improvements, mm -hmm. they have not really thought through. Right. And they can often be disastrous. So we, it's time for us to re-examine what has really been going on through all those improvements mm -hmm. and see if maybe we ought to not go back to uh, older methods. Mm -hmm.